In this episode of the A to Z of Hutton, we take a look at Wolf 359, another of those elusive red dwarf systems that have sat unnoticed in humanity's backyard from a time before even Palantir was in short pants. Indeed, being such a system, it wasn't until the earlier 20th century that astronomer Max Wolf spotted it by comparing photographic plates and included it as the 359th entry in his extensive star catalogue in 1919. At 7.5 light years distant, it is the fifth furthest system from Sol, marginally more distant than Y0855-0714, but not quite the utter schlep that is a trip to Sirius. For those interested in such matters, and as the astrology officer will confirm, it lies in the constellation of Leo. I'm sorry, that should have been apology officer, surely? No, I was right the first time. Anyway, I'm a Scorpio and we don't believe in that kind of nonsense. And don't call me Shirley. Still, don't bother trying to spot it below Leo's belly, as despite its closeness, and like the runner-up in the last federation election, it is a hopelessly dim candidate. Wolf 359 is a small, low-mass system, its red dwarf star having only 9% the mass of Sol, barely enough mass to permit hydrogen fusion. Visiting commanders have even been heard to note, my, what small planets you've got, referring to the two small landable low-G bodies, Campbell's Claim and Camp Donald's, but where they can surface prospect for a wide variety of useful materials. Cunningly, what else would the Pilots' Federation choose to name the first station in such a low-mass system? Yes, you've been missing the joke for this long. Low-mass orbiter, of course, an orbit station. The other is a Coriolis, Powell High, and, try as I might, I just can't see the gag in that one. Both offer plenty of berths for commanders with large hips. I'm sure that should be large ships. Additionally, two surface stations are open to commercial traffic, and a further three surface installations make it a small but busy little place. The economy of Wolf 359 is based on industry, but it remains a relatively economically poor system. Latterly sitting in the lower half of the Hutton influence tables, its small population of 130,000 just about managing to keep the wolf from the door. A prosperous system when Hutton took control in 3302, Infrastructure failures, outbreaks and pirate attacks have recently become more frequent as Commander's attention has drifted elsewhere. Hmm? Look, a squirrel. Hutton's home system Alpha Centauri, being the next closest system to Sol, made for an interesting glitch in the Matrix when Hutton unexpectedly expanded into none other than the very cradle of humanity, Sol. This caused eruptions at the highest level of the Federation. Gas were never so flabbered, and rumour has it that Lord Braben himself had a sweater shopping expedition interrupted until it was decided just what the hell was going on and what to do about it. The Pilots' Federation were forced to immediately take the blue pill. Some shady-looking agents in black suits and dark glasses turned up, there was a bright flash, and Hutton was suddenly in control of Wolf 359 without anybody remembering why or how they got there. Wolf 359 is perhaps better known as the ancestral home of that most wretched of moustache twirling schemers and plot hatchers, the notorious, the infamous, the alliterated, dastardly Don Antonacci. It was here at his lair, Vert's Pride, a well defended fortress on Campbell's claim where three wings of Hutton commanders joined forces against the Don. Have you got hull repair? Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. They engaged in an epic planetary battle in a combined Hutton ship and SRV mission that suppressed and penetrated the base. That's the base calling. Will you stop shooting? Hacked into its systems. Five, four, three, two, one. Scan your data points, guys and carried off a massive data heist back in July 3302. The ground assault elements landed nearby and made a stealthy approach in their SRVs outside the range of the surface defences, 
whilst the airborne elements engaged and destroyed the system defence ships, surface defence turrets, Goliath drones and surface skinners, allowing the ground assault team SRVs to approach into the facility relatively unmolested. The truckers huffed and they puffed and they finally blew the door in. Some confusion ensued about how to actually hack the place, but our brave commander successfully turned something off and something back on again. So there we have it, Wolf 359. Slightly heavier than a house made of straw, but certainly less flammable. Grandma would be very proud. Thank you.